morning on a Monday. <clears throat> Monday, January 11th. You know what that means? Four days till the middle of January. You know what that means? Only one month to the middle of February. You know what that means? <laughs> Only one month to the middle of March. So let's just keep our eyes on on the fact that... And you know what? Like, oh my goodness. I don't know where you live, but this weekend, um, it was nice outside. And Sandra and I uh, went into the big city to get some a couple things. That would be Salmon Arms, the big city when you live in Sigamoose. And uh, we were looking around and I uh, had to get a few uh, prizes for Kids Club and um, some Twinkies <laughs> to deliver to kids this week. And um, it's, man, it was warm. And I said to Sandra, what a gift that the Lord has given us of a mild, um, beautiful January to get us through the the dark of winter with covid and uh god is good and those little uh boons to our soul are, are are a good thing and i thank god for uh the good weather and uh today um is a story about sunshine um sometimes on a hot day you know you just want something cold and um, my kids they got me a soda stream for father's day and uh, as a result i've drunk a lot more water this year and I don't even add flavor to it. I just like bubbly water and I just, uh, I'll just take a liter bottle and I'll just fizz it and, uh, enjoy the, enjoy the water. And, uh, and it's, it's been good. It's been good to drink more water. You, you know, you gotta irrigate your body, your mind, your brain is a lot of water I hear. So, you know, it's been good for me to have more water, but, uh, I want to tell you a story about a hot, probably one of the nicest, uh, May days I've ever been in and the shoe swap and it was, and I thought to myself, it's really hot outside. You know what hit the spot? A Coca-Cola Slurpee. So I went to the Shell and I got myself a nice cola Slurpee. And oh man, the first couple of tastes are so good. And it's hot outside and I'm just, I'm down in that thing. And I'm just like, man, I feel like a kid. I got this, this Slurpee. And I finished that thing in about 10 minutes later. Oh, oh did I feel ill. <laughs> it's because... You know, in just a can of Coke, one can of Coke, there's 10 teaspoons of sugar. And I had had a slurp that was like this big. And I just felt rude. And I was like, oh, what have I done to myself? Well, what my body really needed that day was water. It, it was hot out. I've been going, you know, half the day. You don't need a Coca-Cola Slurpee. Um, and uh, you need water on a day like that. And what David is saying in Psalm 63 is this. He's saying... Oh God, you are my God. I'm not going to choose any other Coca-Cola gods of this world, um, other little G gods, the idols back then, or or the um, the the god of fame or money or um, finding my um, distraction in alcohol or whatever it is. He says, there's only one God that's going to satisfy my soul. God, you are my God. I will choose you to be my God, the one true God. And therefore, I earnestly search for you because my soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. We live in a world that is a desert. I've seen a picture of, uh, I, I'm even using this picture as a picture for our new sermon series on um, for church. But there's this beautiful green tree in the middle of a desert. Well, how does that tree survive only because it's got its roots in an underground river underneath the desert and in this parched and weary land that we live in and in the world and we've seen the news we've seen the best the world has to offer um, we've seen movie stars that have it all they got fame they're beautiful they're married to beautiful people and they're just totally unhappy it's because there's no life-giving water on this earth except for the living water. His name is Jesus. The, um, the woman at the well in John chapter 4 um, tried all the water that this world's got to offer. She tried the water from the well. She tried her thirst being satisfied um, with the things of the world. She's been in multiple relationships and uh, kept getting dumped. And that's likely what happened because in the world that she lived in, um, men had all the power and a man could divorce a woman for burning his toast so that he could marry the 16 year old girl down the street. And, uh, 
and she she found that the world was completely lacking and she had no peace and the men they had no peace either that's why they kept breaking up with her to marry a younger girl and when that didn't work and they would they would dump that that younger girl too because there's no relationship on earth that will satisfy our soul and uh, everyone's searching even for their soulmate and there's no such thing except for the the one whom will, who will satisfy us and that's a relationship with God um, because humans can't meet that need you can't put all the weight of your expectation on a human being there's only one person that will um, satisfy your your soul the relationship the friendship with God the one who made you he meets the deepest need of your heart and that's why you can relax and watch TV at the end of the day but you're still restless because you haven't found rest in God alone he hasn't satisfied your soul and uh, David says I've seen you in your sanctuary I've gazed upon your power and your glory and only your unfailing love is better than life all life has to offer won't meet the deepest need of the human soul. Only how I praise you, God. That's what David's saying. I'll praise you as long as I live because only lifting up your hands in prayer and say, Father, there's no other way that my soul's going to find peace or rest today. Only you. You have the answer. And uh, one commentator I was reading this morning said something I think that was quite profound. Um, and uh, it's it's about the fact that men and women are looking throughout the world for um, satisfaction and they can only find it in someone whose love is better than life itself um, and, and this is most people do not even know that it is God that their souls truly desire so they seek satisfaction in other things and they always come up short I thought that was very true. And I found it too true to be in my own life. Because verse 5 says this. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. When the woman at the well met Jesus. And she'd been there to draw water. water she'd she'd uh, tried relationships with other people. She even tried worship in the Samaritan way. And when she met Jesus, that's when her soul was satisfied and she could say my soul has found the one that i love because deep down at the at the most primal level of our heart we need to know god and there's an old saying no god no peace and that is k n o w god no god know him and you will know peace but if you say n o no god no peace that is true too because um he is the only thing that satisfies us more than the richest feast david says i will praise you with songs of joy and this is this is an interesting two verses i love verse six and seven i lie awake thinking of you meditating on you through the night because you are my helper i sing for joy in the shadow of your wings the people i know who have changed minds renew minds and uh the mind is the is the source of your life your thinking are the ones that think most about jesus that read the most about him that are um pretty well magnificently obsessed with jesus and um when i read a book like knowing god by j.i packer or the divine conspiracy by dallas willard or I, or i listen to a good message by tim keller about jesus or billy graham um, I feel my soul leap out of the muck of this world and land on solid ground. And I feel right again. And, there's, and then there's a song in my heart. Um, I, this, this room that I'm in um, was my daughter's room. Now it's, a, it's a, a, a little office for me. And when I'm at home, I have a place to, to prepare. Um, I have a record player to put on some old records about Jesus. And I sing those old songs that are in my DNA from when I was a kid and and that song will be in my heart all day. And you know what? The way that you start your day, you're wise to start your day seeking your hope in Jesus because you'll be satisfied. And David says, I cling to you and your strong right hand holds me securely. That's a good way to look at it. I cling to you and your hand will hold me. So it's, it's your effort to reach out to God and then his response is to hold you. Okay, I got you. Just be held. 
And you don't have to worry about ever being dropped or let go. God's got you, right? Um, I reach out to Jesus and he holds me fast. And those plotting to destroy me will just come to ruin. I don't have anything to worry about. I'm safe in his hands. And um, the ones that are evil and uh, Satan and all his demons and anybody else that wants to follow him, they're on a they're on a stark spiral downward and we don't have to worry about them. Jesus has us and we are safe. They will die by their own sword, by become the food of jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear to tell the truth will praise him. Liars will be silenced. Because when you belong to Jesus, you've come to the place you've always been looking for. And you're safe in his hands. And uh, I... I tell you, folks, I'm glad, so glad that Jesus is our king because no matter what the world is going through right now, we have our hope on someone who will not disappoint us. The Bible says that. And uh, our job now is just to be held by him, stay close to him, start your day with him, end your day with a prayer before you go to sleep that he would protect your dreams and uh, that he would use you in the daytime to be someone who points people to the source of life, the water of life, the living water. And uh, when, when the woman at the well met Jesus and discovered him, the Messiah, for her life source, she said, I'm going to tell everyone. And she went into her town, and John 4 tells us that many in her town, many people believed in, in the message she said because she met the Messiah and uh, the one that her soul had been looking for her whole life. And that is our job, just to go and tell people that Jesus loves them, too, so they can meet him and know him well. And um, if I would like you guys to watch this clip um, of Jesus meeting the woman at the well from, from the chosen. And you get, you'll feel that in your bones, that, uh, that good news that Jesus is the one who's been searching for us. Would you give me a drink? Did you hear me? That's bad, huh? What? You, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan, and a woman? I'm sorry. I should have said please. You know, it's not safe for you to be alone out here. Nor you. Why haven't you come with others? Why so late in the day? Don't women come to the wells in the, the cool of the morning? Yeah, well, none of them will be seen with me, so I have to come out now, in the heat, as you have so kindly reminded me. Why won't they be seen with you? Long story. I, I'd still like a drink of water, if, if you can spare it. Amazing what a parched throat will do. Aren't I unclean to you? Won't you be defiled by this vessel? Maybe some of my people say that about your women, but I don't. Yeah? And what do you say? I say if you knew who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink. Really? And I would give you living water. Would, except that you have nothing to draw water with, and this is a deep well. Besides, 
What do you need from me if you have your own supply of living water? Long story. But Jewish water is better than Samaritan water. Hmm? That's not what I said. Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well? Your water is better than his? I know Jacob. And everyone who drinks this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. Wouldn't that be nice? The water I give will become in a person a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Really? Yes, really. Prove it. First, go and call your husband and come back. I will show you both. I don't have a husband. You are right. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now is not your husband. <laughs> oh, I see. You're a prophet. You're here to preach at me. No. Usually the one good thing about coming here alone is I can escape being condemned. I'm not here to condemn you. I've made mistakes. Too many. But it's men like you who have made it impossible for me to do anything about it. How? Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews insist Jerusalem is the only place for true worship. They say that because the temple is there. Yeah. Exactly where we're not allowed. I'm here to break those barriers. And the time is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. So, where am I supposed to go when I need God? I've never received anything from God, but I couldn't thank him even if I did. Anywhere. God is spirit. And the time is coming and is now here that it won't matter where you worship, but only that you do it in spirit and truth. Heart and mind, that, that is the kind of worshiper he's looking for. It won't matter where you're from or what you've done. Do you believe what I'm telling you? <laughs> Until the Messiah comes and explains everything and sorts this mess out, including me. I don't trust in anyone. You're wrong when you say that you've never received anything from God. This Messiah you speak of, I am he. The first one was named Ramin. You were a woman of purity who was excited to be married. But he wasn't a good man. He hurt you. And it made you question marriage and even the practice of your faith. Stop it. The second was Farzad. On your wedding night, his skin smelled like oranges. And to this day, every time you pass by the oranges in the market, you feel guilty for leaving him because he was the only truly godly man you've been with. But you felt unworthy. Why are you doing this? I have not revealed myself to the public as the Messiah. You are the first. It would be good if you believed me. You picked the wrong person. I came to Samaria just to meet you. <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that I'm, I'm here in the middle of the day? I am rejected by others. I know, but not by the Messiah. <sighs> and you know these things because you are the Christ. I'm going to tell everyone. I was counting on it. <laughs> Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. It won't be all about mountains or temples. Soon, just the heart. 
You promise? I promise. This man told me everything I've done. Oh, he must be the Christ! <laughs> Hey, wait! <laughs> your water! You forgot your um. Come your man! You told me everything I ever did! <laughs> um, Rabbi, we got food. What would you like? Ah. I have food to eat that you do not know about. Who got you food? Beautiful scene from The Chosen about John chapter 4. You see what Jesus was talking about is when your heart and mind um, connect to God and worship God, like Dave's talking about in Psalm 63, that's when your soul is satisfied. Your heart and mind belong to Him. So have you ever given your life to Jesus? Have you ever said to Him, I know this world doesn't have the answers. I'm lost. I need you. You can pray to Him right now. And when you pray to Jesus, something happens to your life that is, is, is a new thing. And your, your life becomes um, aligned properly as well. And this is a picture of the cross. And you see how um, the cross is vertical. You get that relationship with God right. And then horizontal, you get your relationship with others right too. You can, you can be a whole person. And you get that vertical relationship and the horizontal relationship gets fixed too with others because your heart knows God, the source of life. And then that becomes the source of, of all your life down here too, right now. Not just in heaven, but your life gets fixed here and now. And and I want to lead you in a prayer just to reach out to Jesus and um, your heart and your mind, reaching out to Him. So let's pray. Lord, Today, I want my heart and my mind to be yours. Come and meet me, Holy Spirit. Come and give me life within. Renew my mind. Help me to feel you, to know that you're with me. And may you satisfy my soul. My soul thirsts for you. And I know that in this desert that I live in, you are the living water. Amen. If you reach out to God in faith like that, folks, your heart and mind reaching out to, to Jesus, it's even with a little bit of faith you have, you've started a journey um, and your day off, right? Because you started a journey where you're going to um, sense him and read as much as you can about him. Um, I would challenge you to go to utmost.org every day, U-T-M-O stutmost.org. That's the uh, site where you can read a daily devotion by um, Oswald Chambers called My Utmost for His Highest. And every day learn a little bit more about him. God bless your Monday. Have a great day. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. And give you peace. Because I know that is what you long for. Love you guys. Bye. I'm going to tell everyone. <laughs> I was counting on it. <laughs> My son, they've run out of wine. Mother, my time has not yet come. If not now, when? Father. It has begun. What has? Miracles. Signs and wonders. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You have experienced the miracle, Mary. I saw him. It was incredible. Our Father. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. The man has a following. 
He's a rogue who answers to no one. You asked me before if I knew his name. Now everyone knows his name, and I fear for his safety. Throw this down for a catch. Do you think that impossible things can happen? That overturn the laws of nature? <laughs> that cannot be explained. Rise. Matthew, son of Alpheus. Yes. This is different. Get used to different. My whole life, I have wondered if I would see this day. Follow me, Nicodemus, and you'll see more. God loves the world in this way. He gave his only son. I'm going to tell everyone. <laughs> I was counting on it. Anything is possible now. Don't you see? Let's go. I was one way. And now I am completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. Hey, it's Dallas and the creator of The Chosen, and yes, season one of The Chosen is complete. All eight episodes, they're available right now. You can look up The Chosen in the App Store or Google Play, and we're easy to find. You can download it and be watching within minutes. And in fact, it's unprecedented technology. You can connect to almost any device you have directly, and you don't even need a subscription. So I hope you'll check out season one of The Chosen right now.